Well, good morning, my friends. I am getting ready to sip my warm coffee and sit down and do my Bible reading for this morning. I'm in the book of Acts right now, working on chapter six, and I wanted to show you guys something cool. If you are working on studying the Bible, this is a great book to um, incorporate into your study time. It really breaks down every chapter, every verse, and just helps explain the entire Bible to you very well, because sometimes the Bible can be difficult to understand. It also comes in in the Old Testament version. So check these out. I will link them in the description because they have been really helpful to me. It seems like the morning time here in Virginia is the only time that I can sit on the front porch and drink my coffee because the rest of the day is way too hot. Hey, turkey. So I thought it would be fun to do something a little bit different with you guys and just do a get it all done with me video. I've got a to-do list here of errands I've got to run and my dinner ingredients. So sometimes on the homestead, as a mom, as a wife, you've just got to get a lot of stuff done. This isn't a big list, but it is something that I've got to knock out. And I'm a list person, you guys. I like to write things down and I like to be able to check that box. So the first thing we're going to do today is feed the sourdough starter because that's going to sit on the counter for about five or six hours. We're going to be using my sourdough starter today in our dinner recipe. So nothing um, fancy here. I just use one cup of starter to one cup of lukewarm water. And then I add in about two cups of all purpose flour. My favorite, as you guys know, is einkorn flour. Give it a good mix and then leave it on the counter for five or six hours and it'll be ready for the dinner recipe tonight. So for breakfast this morning, I'm just making a simple flatbread made out of sourdough starter discard. I've got some chopped chives from the garden and I make a really simple dipping sauce with just olive oil and soy sauce. And then I sprinkle on everything bagel seasoning. Just heat up your skillet, you guys, and put it all in there. You wanna flip it just once, cook for about four to five minutes on each side. It is so delicious. I will link that recipe here. I wanted to share with you guys really quickly this electrolyte powder that I've been using in my water every day. It's lemonade flavor. I love it because it is sweetened with stevia, so it doesn't have all the crazy chemicals in there, and it really gives your body that boost of electrolytes that it needs. It dissolves really well, so no clumps, which I love. So I will also link this for you guys in the description box of this video. Look at that, you guys. Crispy on the outside, nice and fluffy on the inside. It is such a delicious way to use your sourdough starter. 
All right, so as you guys saw on my to-do list for today, one of the things I've got to get done is get Parker's Science Unit bound. It comes like this, loose leaf papers, um, and I just I want to get it bound so I don't have to worry about papers being all over the place. So today we're going to take this down to UPS. They bind things on you know very inexpensively, um, and this is just a little glimpse of the good and the beautiful science unit, the bird unit. Um, I love the good and the beautiful science. It's so beautiful. Here is just a couple sneak peeks at some of the pages. They have this adorable bird watching notebook. Parker is really excited about this science curriculum, you guys. We have a ton of birds where we live, so he's gonna get to you know, journal all of the birds that he sees throughout the school year here in this notebook. Some of the other things that came with this science unit is this little bird migration reader. Again, it's super colorful and cute. And then it's got the songbird study book that really goes into detail about all these different birds, what they do, their characteristics. And again, it's just a beautiful book with lots of vivid colors and I love that. Hey guys, how are you? Welcome back to my channel for another video. My name is Tina. So I feel like I haven't seen you guys in forever. Like I've done a ton of videos, right? Like I'm, I've been in the kitchen cooking, lots of preserving from the garden harvest, um, you know, our trip to Alaska, just lots of videos, but I haven't really done any videos where I'm sitting down just kind of hanging out with you guys and chatting about, you know, life and what's going on up in here. So I want to preface this video with saying if you are not into the chatty videos and you don't like to hang out with me, I don't know why you wouldn't, but that's fine. Go ahead and scroll on, no worries. Come back, check out another video, maybe where I'm not talking as much. But for all my friends out there that do like to grab a cup of coffee and sit down and hang out, let's do that today. So as you guys saw, I've got a to-do list that I've got to knock out today. Me and Parker are gonna be running some errands together. I like to consolidate my to-do list um, because I don't like to go out much. I like to like stay away from the crazy people. So I usually put a bunch of stuff in one day and then I just go and knock it out. It minimizes my interaction with the crazy. Um, and right now it's kind of crazy. You guys see the CDC's new, um, well, their latest update. Okay, looks like the masks are back. <laughs> um, not for this girl though. I don't, I don't do them. But anyway, um, enough of that. So yeah, I like to consolidate, get everything done at once. So I'm not out and about as much as possible. Um, but we've got several things we've got to get done today. So Parker and I are going to head out um, right now. I've got to go get my nails done. And then we're going to drop off some items for the Goodwill. We have been cleaning out closets and a lot of the bedrooms and the garage and just kind of gearing up for our big move to Alaska. And we are going from an 1800 square foot home to 600 square feet. So we've got a lot of downsizing to do and a lot of closet cleaning out. So I've got a ton of things that I'm gonna to donate today. I am going to try and get Parker some soccer cleats and shin guards today. Um, you guys would be so proud of me. I signed him up for soccer this fall. Um, I'm not a sportsy kind of mom. I know that a lot of moms out there are, nothing wrong with that. I am just not that kind of a mom. I really um, don't like to be running here and there. I don't like to be um, passing ships in the night with my husband and never getting to see him. Um, dinner's on the go. That's just not me, you guys. I really like to have downtime with my family, cook the good meals, and just have some time to do nothing if that's what we want to do. Nothing. <laughs> and that's okay. Um, but Parker did do a summer soccer camp um, a while back before COVID hit and he absolutely loved it. So soccer season is starting up and I surprised him and got him signed up for that. And the other thing you saw on my list was his bird science unit with the good and the beautiful that we're doing this year for fourth grade. Um, you guys know that I use CLE Christian Light Education Curriculum for all of our subjects, but I really do love the good and the beautiful science. It's fun. It's colorful. It's interactive. Lots of fun stuff. So, and then we're going to come home and just make a really yummy 
cast iron skillet dinner. You guys saw I fed my sourdough starter this morning so that it has time to um, get nice and big and double in size because we're gonna be using that sourdough starter tonight for my skillet recipe. Let's hang out and let's go knock these errands out and then we will come back and chat while I clean out our homeschool cart and get that ready for fourth grade. All right, you guys, so I just got done getting my nails done and it started pouring rain. <laughs> so I'm actually not mad. It's just been so hot and so humid here in Virginia that having a little overcast weather is welcomed. So I will be finishing our errands today in the rain. So um, little Parker got a pedicure with me today. So he likes to get his toes done with mom. That's kind of our thing. He's been trying to convince Joe to get his toes done too, but Joe says he's too manly for that. So I've actually had comments from some subscribers that are like, you're a homesteader and you've got pigs and you do this, but you wear makeup and you get your nails done. Well, yes. So as far as the makeup, you guys, I've just always been like that. And you guys have seen me with like bare face, no makeup videos before. Like I'm most definitely not one of those people that's like, I have to have makeup on every day. In fact, most days I don't have makeup on. Um, but if I'm going to go out and about and do things or we're going to go out to dinner or something like that, I definitely put makeup on and I've just always been like that. And as far as my nails go, you guys, I have had an issue since I was a kid. I used to bite my nails really, really bad um, to the point where I actually got an infection in my middle finger when I was a teenager. So um, I don't bite my nails anymore, but then it kind of morphed into this picking issue. So I pick at my cuticles to the point where it looks like I've got like a flesh eating disease. I don't understand. I don't know why I do it. I have found that when I get the acrylic nails, the acrylic is so thick that I'm not able to pick the skin the way that I normally would. So it actually breaks me from picking the skin. Um, usually my thumbs are the worst. You guys, I've actually picked the tan right off of my fingers before. So it's a pretty bad habit. Um, I don't always have my nails done. There's actually a big chunk of the year where I take them off and uh, just go El Natural. But I do sometimes like to uh, one, treat myself. I like the way that they look, especially because my cuticles are nice and soft and clean and don't look like I have some type of disease. So that's why I get my nails done, <laughs> just in case you were wondering. All right, you guys, well, before this storm gets too bad, we're going to head out, get this stuff donated, and head over to UPS and get Parker's science curriculum. Done. I'm giving up cooking. <laughs> we're actually moving to Alaska. Oh, that's exciting. So we're downsizing. Exercise. And all this stuff is just extra stuff that's been in these cupboards and I never use it, so. And that's it. Thank you. You too. Alright, you guys, so we just picked up Parker's little bird unit. Look at that. UPS bound it for me, so. I don't have to do anything. They put a little uh, clear cover on it, which is nice. And then it's all just ready for us for the school year. Hi, welcome to Starbucks. What are you going to eat today? Um, what kind of cake pops do you guys have right now? Uh, we have our birthday chocolate and cookie dough. What do you want, P? Ooh. I personally like the birthday one because I'm not just like a chocolate person, you know what I mean? Okay, <laughs> what do you want? A birthday, oh, okay, we're gonna go with the birthday cake. Best one in my opinion. <laughs> and then I'm gonna just get a grande sweet cream vanilla cold brew. All right. And that's gonna be it. All right, I've been told that at 7.31 at the window. All right, thank you. No problem. It's not a treat. <laughs> Mom, no. All right, you guys, so I'm normally a hot coffee kind of girl, um, but lately I've been in love with this cold brew. And um, as you just heard, it's the sweet cream vanilla cold brew and it's awesome. 
it's my favorite. So if you haven't tried it, give it a shot. It's so yummy. As you can see, it's like super creamy and delicious. Like I'm a visual person and I need that cream in there, you know what I'm saying? But give it a try, it's really good. All right, so we are done with our errands. I was gonna get Parker's shoes today, his cleats, but the store we were gonna go to is kind of far away. And with the weather being kind of crappy, I just decided that we're not gonna do it today. So we'll probably go go hit that store up at another time. So we're gonna. So I decided on the way home, since we didn't go get cleats today, we were gonna do a quick stop and grab some school supplies that I need for the homeschool cart. We are just running low on some things, so um, I keep it simple, you guys, and I keep it inexpensive. So we were literally at this store for five minutes tops. you what we are working with right now we are working with the hot mess here this is like my mobile classroom and I absolutely love it because it just rolls so easily I just roll this into the kitchen each day when we do school but when the school year ended I rolled it into the office and I have not touched it since can anybody relate <laughs> I'm like done with the school year. So it's a hot mess. We've got our curriculum from last year that we finished just kind of scattered throughout. I've got some art stuff that he's been doing over the summer and all of our pencils and pens, like everything is just like all mixed up and I need to go through them. We tried to do an art project the other day and all of our glue had dried up and was all messed up so I had to buy new glue. So yeah, so this is our little practice clock that we use when we're practicing um, time and learning time but I just need to go through here and get this organized with all of our new curriculum for fourth grade. Now I will tell you guys, uh, one thing I don't miss is back to school shopping. And as most of you know, Lexi, um, my daughter Lexi, did do public school her entire life. So she just graduated last year, 2020. So we did the whole back to school shopping every year. Um, you know, that big list that the school sends you home of all the stuff that they want you to supply, not only for your child, but the whole classroom. <laughs> so um, this is my idea of school shopping. I do not go and spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars anymore on school shopping. Um, homeschooling, we just reuse a lot of the stuff that we already had. Like today, I did buy a small pack of colored pencils just because some of his favorite colors are pretty much run out, but we're just reusing our colored pencils from last year. I'm gonna get them all sharpened really good for him so that they're ready to go, but um, I just don't spend all that money on um, school supplies because we just kind of use what we have. and. You know, his ruler, all of the letters on his last ruler wore off, so I did get him a new ruler. We needed some new glue, desperately. I tried to do an art project with him. You guys might have seen that on my <laughs> on my YouTube community wall. I was teasing and joking how I'm allergic to glitter. I am not a crafty person, you guys, and what's funny is I like to crochet, and I actually love to paint. Um, I love to cook. I mean, you guys see me in the kitchen all the time. So I am a creative person, um, you know, hence the YouTube channel, but I don't know what it is about doing like kids crafts. But when we take out the craft bag, I get all sorts of, um, stressed out. It just causes like major anxiety and I'm not that creative when it comes to those kind of crafts. Like I have to go to Pinterest and scroll and find something for us to do. But I had like seven bottles of glue and all of them were like disgusting. And I was like, wow, that's how much we craft around here. So I got rid of all of them. I bought a new one today, so we're all set. 
Um, got Parker some new mechanical pencils. He loves mechanical pencils. And I got him some more erasers because you guys, I don't know if it's a boy thing. Um, let me know in the comments for those of you that are schooling girls, but he blows through erasers like nobody's business. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Are you eating them? And then I just got him some, like I said, some colored pencils to add to his collection and then some new markers because he really loves to color with markers and his from last year um, are pretty dried out and used up. So we did get some new markers today. And I got some index cards because we do Bible memory verses on index cards. So that's what these are for. So I think the first thing I'll do is take all of this stuff out of the cart so that I can get it organized. But like I was telling you guys earlier when I started the video, um, I was kind of proud of myself that I signed Parker up for soccer. And I was telling you how I'm not much of a sportsy kind of mom. And I, I grew up that way. Um, my mom raised us four kids on her own. We did not have a lot of money, as you could imagine. Um, our dads were kind of MIA. And a lot of years we spent on welfare. So, you know, that whole uh, back to school shopping thing definitely didn't happen for my mom. It was a struggle for her every year. And so sports, as you can imagine, with four kids was like, that wasn't going to happen. I remember I wanted to be a cheerleader so bad. And, um, you know, all the girls, the cheerleaders, they, I just thought they were so pretty and their little outfits and stuff. And, uh, but the uniforms were so expensive. My mom was just like, can't do it, Tina. So I didn't, I didn't get to do that. Um, I think I did do cross country, but that wasn't when I lived with my mom. That was when I lived with my uh, grandparents. So I didn't grow up in a sports kind of family. Um, I know like a lot of people, you know, you grew up in sports and everything. And so you kind of do the same thing with your kids, which I think is wonderful. I think it's great. Um, but I just never really did a lot of sports when I was growing up. So I guess it's not really ingrained in me. So I've never really done that with my kids. Now, Lexi did do, um, we did have her in dance and she did gymnastics when we were in Alaska. So she has done some stuff. We did Girls on the Run, which is a really awesome program um, to help. I'm just throwing out stuff in like stacks on the ground. But uh, she did Girls on the Run, which was an awesome program to help girls with their self-esteem and confidence. Um, and we did like a 5K run to celebrate the end of that program that her and I did together, which was kind of cool, so. Oh my gosh, you guys, I haven't touched this uh, curriculum cart <laughs> since school got out. We like, seriously, we rolled it in here and we were like, see ya, third grade's over. Um, okay, so I'm gonna hang on to our social studies. Um, a few videos back, I told you guys that we didn't get all the way through this because we switched curriculums last year, halfway through the year from the good and the beautiful and went into um, Christian light education. So we are gonna go ahead and finish up last year's social studies curriculum before I purchase fourth grade um, curriculum from CLE. So I'm gonna hang on to this. That's gonna go in the cart for this year. See, so we do like Bible memory verses, like I was telling you guys. Nothing, nothing special, but um, Parker, my gosh, there's gotta be like 45, 50 Bible verses here. Um, and we just write the verses on the back. I love Christian light education because it is just awesome. And it really um, helps to incorporate the Bible and, and God into everything that you do. So he learned so many verses last year um, with the Christian light education curriculum. And I really love that. So that's why I bought more index cards. So funny story, um, do you guys have a dictionary? So a lot of us, we don't do dictionaries anymore, right? Because we have uh, Google or our friend Siri. So a lot of children don't know even how to use a dictionary anymore. Um, and CLE, Christian Light Education, the curriculum we use is really big on making sure that kids know how to go to an actual dictionary and find things when they need it. So here's the thing. This is a children's dictionary and why, while I love it, um, let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay. Beautiful pictures, right? So Parker gets so distracted. I practice a dictionary with him and I give him a word uh, and have him find it. But he's just like, okay, um, you, I need you. And he's flipping and he's like, oh, mom, look, 
you know, dinosaurs. Oh, mom, look, what is that? And she's like, oh, mom, hold on. Let me show you one more thing. Mom, look at, oh, mom, look at all the moths. Oh, my gosh. And I'm just like, just find the word. <laughs> Oh, this is a really awesome children's dictionary, but moms beware um, because the kids do get distracted by all the beautiful pictures. It takes a little while to find the words you're looking for. All right, so I'm gonna put our dictionary back in the cart. I usually keep that on the bottom because we do use that. Uh, Parker wanted to keep the, the level three handwriting from The Good and the Beautiful. Um, he didn't finish this last year because, like I said, we switched over to CLE. But he did ask me um, when I was getting rid of all the old curriculum if he could keep this and continue working through the last half of it that he didn't finish because it's not just doing cursive writing, but it has these fun little um, pictures and stuff, these, these little step-by-step -step pictures that he can draw. So he really had fun with that. So I let him keep this, and we'll just let him work on that, you know, when he's got – some extra time where he gets bored or something. And then the other thing I'm gonna go ahead and put back in the car, something that him and I actually both love, is uh, Draw Right Now. Have you guys heard of these? I'll link this in the description, um, all the things that we're talking about, the children's dictionary, because you guys, dictionaries can be boring, right? Okay, dictionaries can be super dry like an encyclopedia. So for the kids, it makes it exciting for them when there's all these beautiful pictures that they can look at while they're looking up their words. And the other thing I love is this Draw Right Now. So it teaches the kids how to draw pictures step by step like this and I love that it's so much fun so he draws it and then writes out this paragraph here um, I usually have him copy this in cursive because he's he knows how to write in cursive so I like him to really practice that as much as he can but you guys he doesn't do this by himself like him and I sit down and we do these pictures together like here is his turtle from last year and then I did a turtle too. Mine's not as colorful, but like I said, it takes everything in me to get artsy and crafty. And then we did, um, we actually just did these lizards like three days ago. He asked if we could do one. So it gives you the step-by-step -step, and then you just kind of color it in. So it's fun because it's something that him and I do together. I'm like, mom, wanna do a draw right now? And then we'll sit down and we'll do a picture together. So I do have to say I've got a really cool shark on the refrigerator. It's been there for, I don't know, eight months because it's just like, Lexi was like, you didn't draw that. And I was like, yeah, girl. Yes, I did. I did that. Like a great white. And it looks just like a great white. Not a guppy. <laughs> okay, so we've got his social studies. And then the next thing I'm going to put in his cart is his fourth grade language arts curriculum from CLE and the parent guide to go with it. And then we've got reading. So we've got the parent guide and then his CLE student book. And then they also have this beautiful hardcover um, reader that goes along with it. And it's got like beautiful pictures in it. I just love it. And you guys, this reading program, I love it because it has good morals and ethics and Christian values sprinkled throughout all the stories. So it's really awesome. So beautiful hardcover book to go with the reading program. And lastly, we've got his math curriculum. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Um, parent book and student book to go with it. And I'm going to go ahead and add his um, science bird unit that we got for fourth grade, the one that we bound today at the UPS store. So I'm really excited about doing that with Parker this year. The other thing I'm going to add to my cart is Parker's little devotion book that we do every day. It's indescribable, and I will also link this down in the description. You guys, if you're looking for a simple but fun and interesting way to sit down with your kiddos and just kind of devote some time to the Lord with them in the morning and go over some scripture and you're not really sure where to start, this is a really good place to start. It's just a daily devotional and it really intertwines uh, science 
and how God has created our amazing world. It always goes back to scripture and something that the kids can relate back to their life, maybe something that they're going through, um, friendships and things like that. So this is a really cool daily devotional for kids. We did this last year and we're gonna do it again this year and I will make sure to link this in the description for you guys. All right, you guys, show and tell. Parker's come in to show you guys his little chick and he's all sweaty because he was outside in the humidity chasing the chickens, weren't ya? Yeah, she was being mean. She was being mean? Yeah, she kept going under the trailer. Oh, she was being mean because she was like successfully hiding from you? Mm -hmm. So you guys might remember from this video here, this is one of our chicks that Joe actually saved that we incubated here in the house. And we named her Hulky um, because when she was first born, she was like tough. Feisty. Huh? Feisty. Feisty. So we named her Hulk. We weren't sure if she was going to be a rooster or a hen. And lo and behold, she is a hen. So we've named her Hulky. Um, but she's a... Uh, She's a mix between a, ow, oh, that's a, <laughs> she's a mix between our buff Burfington rooster and our Easter egger, hence the um, really fuzzy fat cheeks that she has. So, but as you can tell, she is strong and healthy. So every day I see her, I just think it's amazing that Joe um, helped break her out of the egg and she's just alive as can be. Aren't you? Yeah, pretty girl. <laughs> so you guys, we have been... Um, really busy with the Alaska cabin purchase and everything that goes along with that. So um, we're kind of purging a lot of the extra stuff from the house. We're going from, like I said, 1,800 square feet down to 600 square feet um, at the Alaska cabin. So you guys know how it is. We just accumulate junk, right? And there is just so much junk that we don't use anymore, we haven't used. And being in the military every three or four years, we're just used to that cycle of moving every three or four years and we're used to purging and getting rid of crap, which was part of what we did today, um, donating all that stuff. A lot of that stuff today was big kitchen appliances that I just don't use enough to warrant taking them all the way up to Alaska and trying to find a place to store them in the tiny little kitchen that we have in the new cabin. And by the way, if you haven't seen our video of the new cabin in Alaska, I'm gonna go ahead and link that here for you guys, so make sure to check it out and you'll see what I'm talking about. It's significantly small compared to what we have here in Virginia. So, um, you know, um, a deep fryer. I had a big deep fryer that we bought and we might have used it two or three times all these years that we've had it. Um, a big Mac Daddy waffle maker. We don't need a big waffle maker like that. There's three of us and if we if we want waffles bad enough, we can go and get one of those smaller waffle makers that will fit easier in the cupboard. So just kind of purging, getting rid of all that stuff. But we're really excited. We do have some time. Uh, Joe doesn't actually retire from the military um, for another year and a half. So we've got time to get everything you know, the way that we want it. And we will be going up to Alaska to check on the cabin and do some work on the cabin because we've got to put some skirting around the bottom of it and insulate the pipes for winter and all that. So we are going to be taking trips up there before he retires. But in the meantime, we're going to take this opportunity to kind of get rid of all of the things that we don't need anymore. So I've had a lot of people uh, that have asked, you know, oh, you're going to Alaska. Why Alaska? Oh my gosh. Isn't it freezing there all the time? Some people think we're crazy. Well, you guys, as I've said before, we, we were stationed in Alaska twice. Um, we did a total of seven years up there. Parker was born there. Uh, the first time we were stationed in Fairbanks, Alaska, when we were in the army. And the second time we were stationed there was when we were both in the Coast Guard and we were stationed in Ketchikan, Alaska. So if you look at the map of Alaska, Fairbanks is more north and Ketchikan is very, very um, south. It's actually like almost like right above Canada and um, it's an island. Ketchikan is an island there. So um, very different climate. So in Fairbanks, it was absolutely freezing. Um, but the summers were beautiful. Summers were a daylight pretty much 24 hours a day. Winters were dark. Um, and the coldest we saw it get was like minus 50 degrees. 
you have to plug in your vehicles to keep them from freezing over. Like literally at the grocery stores, they have um, plug-in poles at the parking spots where you have to plug your car in to keep it warm. Um, so that was a very interesting experience. I remember stepping off the plane in Fairbanks, Alaska with Lexi. And I remember like my nose hairs cracking. Like <laughs> it was that cold. I took that first deep breath in and I coughed because it was just that cold. Um, but our experience in Ketchikan was very different. Ketchikan is, uh, the, t the climate is very similar to Washington state. So, um, very overcast, gets a ton of rain. It's a tempered rainforest there. Um, it does get some snow in the winter, but not much. So, you know, everybody has this idea of what they think Alaska is. They think of, you know, igloos and polar bears and that's just not how it is everywhere. So it's, you know, they've got Walmart and they've got restaurants and, you know, all the things. So where we're going in Alaska is um, kind of South Central Alaska, but it's really not what um, people might think. You know, if you go and look at the cabin video, uh, you know, that was in July when we went up there for the home inspection for the cabin. And it was like 60 something degrees and they just had a big heat wave up there and had 80 degree weather for several days. So the summers are beautiful and the wildflowers and it is just an amazing place. So it's magical um, and it's not what everybody thinks it is when you think of Alaska. I think people are like mixing up Alaska with like Antarctica. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, okay? It can be really cold in Alaska, depending on where you're at. And it can be rough terrain, untouched land, you know what I mean? But I've been teasing Joe lately and telling him that I think that with the way the culture is going, I think I'm probably going to get along with the bears and the moose more than I do people. Hello. I mean, people people be crazy, you know? Like, I'm just like, I can't, I cannot do the crazy people. It's just, it's getting bad out there. There's actually a lot of uh, homeschoolers in Alaska, so I'm really excited about that. I've joined some uh, homeschooling groups already online so that I can keep, you know, myself in the know of what's going on up there. They have a ton of extracurricular activities up there for the kids. I'm really excited to get Parker plugged into that. So when we get ready to leave, um, you know, some people have asked us, what are we going to do with all the animals and stuff? So the chickens, we are going to sell our, you know, our regular flock, our laying hens. We're going to sell them. Um, I'm kind of sad about our rooster and our old mama hen brownie because they were our very first chickens on the old farm uh, when we started this whole homesteading journey. So I am sad about that, but the trip up there is just not going to allow for all of those kinds of animals to come with us. We are taking both of our dogs and both of our cats and that's it. So we're going to be selling the chickens and of course the pigs will be in the freezer here in just a couple months so we don't need to worry about that. What we're going to be doing is driving from Virginia up to Bellingham, Washington and then we'll be getting on the ferry and taking the ferry for about five days up to um, near Anchorage, Alaska. So it's going to be a long trip, probably anywhere from 10 to I'd say 15 days, just depending on how much we have to stop and how much driving we get in. But you guys, I'm excited. Like it's, we have, we're not in a hurry. We are not on anybody's schedule. Joe's going to be retired. Like there's nothing that there's no schedule that we have to keep, except we've got to make it to Washington to catch the ferry that we'll have booked. But other than that, it's like, it's just this big adventure to go into the next chapter of our lives. And so I don't look at this like this, you know, uh, dreading this road trip. I look at it like an adventure and I cannot wait to show Parker everything all along the way. So I'm going to finish working on um, cleaning out the coloring caddy and cleaning out my homeschool cart. And then after this, I'm going to head into the kitchen and get dinner going. And just like that, we are ready for fourth grade. Everything is clean and organized. I'm also going to link my pencil sharpener for you guys and this awesome homeschool cart in the description of this video. The pencil sharpener can be used on battery or you can plug it in so it's mobile and I love that. But this cart is just so convenient so I will be sure to link this for you guys in case you want to try it out too.
All right, you guys know how everything on Instagram and YouTube always looks perfect and people are like, oh man, they have it all together and how do they keep their house so clean? And mm, now let me show you guys what's really going on. You ready? Welcome to my office slash homeschool room. <laughs> now, let me tell you guys that this is the result of me and Joe coming in here, ripping this closet apart. And we are going through things, like I said, to get rid of what we don't need. Definitely got to keep our uh, chicken egg incubator. Not getting rid of that. But look at that, you guys. You would have never known that I was sitting in a room like this that looked like a bomb went off, right? Yeah, well, this is real life, y'all. So don't feel bad. My house isn't always clean. And I surely ain't got it all together all the time. You know what I'm saying? All right, just checking in with my to-do list here, and it looks like we have gotten everything done today that I wanted to get done, except for the cleats for Parker, but we can go get those on another day. So now we are going to start cooking some dinner. This skillet recipe is simple and delicious, you guys. I'm not gonna go through all the ingredients right here on the video, because this video is already kind of long, but I'm gonna link the recipe in the description for you of this video, so make sure to check it out, because it's one of my favorite meals to make for the family. So while I'm chopping these veggies, I've got my ground beef on the stove browning. And when it's done cooking, we are simply going to remove it from the pan temporarily so that we can saute all of our vegetables together. So now we're just gonna drizzle the pan with some olive oil and add our veggies, saute those really well. I don't have any fresh cilantro on hand, but I do love to cook with my essential oils, you guys. If you are interested in learning about essential oils and how you can get them for 50% off, I'm gonna link my wellness page in the description box of this video. While the veggies are cooking, we are going to work on our sourdough starter mixture. All we're gonna do is add a cup and a half of our sourdough starter. We're gonna add some baking powder to the mixture and I love to watch the starter bubble and get bigger with the baking powder. After that, we're gonna add some dried basil. This is basil I harvested from the garden and dried in the dehydrator. And then add three tablespoons of melted butter and give that a good mix. And remember you guys, I'm putting this recipe in the description box, so make sure to check it out. After it's all mixed up, we're gonna add three eggs and mix it all up and then we will be ready to go. Once the veggies are done sauteing, we're gonna add the ground beef back to our skillet. And this is where you are going to add about a cup to a cup and a half of either frozen corn or canned corn, whatever you wish. As you can see, I forgot to do that here. <laughs> so I'm adding it on the back end, but normally this is where you would add the corn if you wanna have corn in this recipe. All we're gonna do, you guys, is add our sourdough mixture to the top, spread it around evenly, and sprinkle our cheese over the top of our skillet. Pop it in the oven at 400 degrees for about 25 minutes, and dinner is served. Places in the world I've been to, this is where my heart is. Oh, you know it's true. No matter 
this recipe is so versatile, you guys can really add any veggies that you want, any meat that you want. And when I am done, I like to add a little dollop of sour cream and a little bit of salsa, and it's just delicious. This tastes like a Mexican um, cilantro type dish. It is absolutely amazing. As always, you guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me today on this Get It All Done With Me video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys on the next video. Hello? Hi. Can I help you with something? I was actually recording a video. <laughs> Yeah, you timed that just right. What can I help you with? Um, yeah, I think that's about it. So <laughs> I like to do with the science unit. Hey! Knock it off! Oh, 